Well, I'll tell you what, we're about two and a half minutes away from the opening tip. Earlier tonight, Bruce uh, Rasmussen's Lady Jays beat the Morningside Chiefs 76 to 75. And as we got here getting ready in the for our ball game with the Drake Bulldogs, it was really exciting ball game, so they continue to roll. The Lady Jays just continue to roll under Coach Rasmussen, and uh, of course, congratulations to them on a fine season. Of course, we're getting a look at, a, at one of the young men who is definitely an integral part of the Blue Jay success so far this season. The Jays overall are 17 and six. They own a six and three conference record. They trail Wichita State by two games. The Wheat Shockers eight and one. Tulsa because they lost that overtime game at home to Illinois State the other night. Uh, sit at eight and two in the conference. We're going to get ready for the introduction of the starters from both ball clubs. And as I said, this has uh, been a big rivalry over the years. And of course, if you followed Creighton basketball, if you're not new to the area and uh, know the rivalry between these, these two ball clubs, you can understand the excitement tonight. Demetrius Henderson is a 6'2 junior out of Cleveland, Ohio. And he'll be opposite Landreth Ball, the 6'8 sophomore from Chicago. Landreth coming into his own uh, the last couple of weeks. Had those big, big free throws against Bradley in Peoria, which made a big, big difference. Darrell Lloyd, number 45, a senior out of Philadelphia, the younger brother of Lewis Lloyd, who kind of catapulted Drake basketball in the late 70s. From Tupelo, Mississippi, Reggie Morris, number 32. Reggie, of course, a 6'3 junior. Part of that new starting lineup, although it's really not new anymore. Creighton fans have been able to see it for quite a while. Melvin Mathis, number 44, 6'7", junior out of Baltimore. He'll be opposite double O, seven footer from Monroe, Louisiana, Ben Benjamin. Benjamin, first in the nation in rebounds, first in the nation in block shots, ninth in field goal percentage, 19th in scoring. Stephon Butler, a senior from Chicago. He's the quick hand guard out front that likes to steal the ball inside from the big men. 6-4, sophomore out of Dallas, Gary Swain, a pleasant addition to this great lineup, both last year and this year. Rounding out the starting five for the Drake Bulldogs, number 24, a six-foot freshman from Carbondale, Illinois, Glenn Martin. Probably one of the most exciting Blue Jay players to come along in a long, long time. Out of New York City, number 22, 6'2", senior, Vernon Moore at guard. The kid, first in field goal percentage, or second in field goal percentage in the nation, 31st in scoring. And this Blue Jay squad this week took over as the number one team in field goal percentage in the nation, shooting at 55.3%. As we get a look at the starting lineups for the Great Blue Jays. Tori, you know, Vernon Moore is one of the, the best athletes in the history of the city coming in here to Omaha and, and tremendously popular and doing so well. A four-year starter, and what a year he is having, and along with Benoit Benjamin, two tremendous names to be added to the history books for Creighton basketball. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Those guys definitely have put basketball back into Creighton's uh, vocabulary. The Bulldogs, the visiting team, will be in blue with the white numerals. The Blue Jays, of course, in their home white with blue numerals trimmed in gold. There is excitement in the auditorium because they know they're Blue Jays. It is not a dream anymore. The Blue Jays definitely can control their destiny. They probably will one way or the other. They have a very good chance of being the Mo Valley regular season champions. And if they fall short, there's always the postseason tournament. Tip goes to Creighton, which is usually the case. And we'll watch the Bulldogs. Sometimes they'll set up in a man-to-man, -man, which can be deceiving, but they're going to put the pressure on the Blue Jays. They want to let, uh, they're going to watch Benjamin get his points, as far as I was told earlier today, but they don't want Vernon Moore to really kill him. 19 points by Vernon Moore makes him the fifth all-time Creighton scorer. Gary Swain on the lane. And I'll tell you what, the great coaching staff has to like to see that because Vernon Moore is gone after this year, and they need somebody to be able to penetrate with authority as Gary does. Benjamin has those holes numbered when he has the basketball in there, Torrey, and he knew Gary Swain was there, and that's what he could do for you in there. Lloyd inside the Mathis over Benjamin is good, so 
Melvin Mathis evens the score at two. Again, you see the pressure being put on by Glenn Martin. Mathis and Lloyd have been battling the flu and they're starting the game. Their sports information director told me before the game that they certainly would see action, but it's been a struggle. Ben on the baseline, we have a whistle and there's a foul inside. And they're pointing at Stephon Butler, and that's exactly what we talked about. He likes to try to get his hands in there when the big men bring it down about hip height, but he'll pick up a lot of fouls that way. His first team first. The game still tied at two. The Blue Jays with an on-shooting violation, and Butler just picked that one right out of the air. He wants to run, dumps it off. Lloyd with a jumper, won't go, rebound Mathis, won't go, bounce. Landreth Ball with a rebound. Creighton, good job getting back after the steal by Drake. So the Bulldogs had a chance to go ahead early, and they didn't, and Vernon Moore, what a move, but it won't go. Sealed off nicely inside, but then Reggie Morris gets the foul, scrambling for the loose ball. So this is Morris, his first team first. Not shooting violation, so the Bulldogs will inbound to Willis Reed. A win tonight will give him 50 career wins as a head coach. And as you heard Terry mention earlier, he's honing in on the 500 mark. His first couple of years here at Creighton were tough. They'd be tough for any coach. Creighton with some man pressure down the floor. The Bulldogs are able to clear out. So Lloyd now he passes off in this near corner. Stephon Butler wants to work on swing. Can't they almost throw it away? On the far side, Martin can't do anything with it, so Henderson has to come out on the swing. Really clogging up that middle, of course, with Benjamin there. It's even doubly important. He and Mathis, though, getting in a shoving match. Demetrius Henderson has his first field goal of the night, and the Bulldogs lead by two. They're going to have to have it to play and win this game tonight. Drake will. Their tallest players are 6'7". They have two of them. Well, Drake's had a couple of heartbreaking ball games, especially that one against Tulsa over in Des Moines where they had a chance to win it, and they did not as Butler picks up his second foul, team second. So Gary Garner realizes what his team's goal must be tonight. A lot of intensity in this ball game, the electricity, the crowd into this game from the start. Unlike Monday night when West Texas was in here, it was kind of like flat ball game, although the Blue Jays did statistically well. Crowd senses a great conference race at Creighton's in this year. Ben with a big slam. Well, of course, it's not all that, it's not all that difficult when, you have, uh, when you're seven feet tall. Game tied. Opening minutes of this Missouri Valley ball game between Creighton and Drake. Nice pass inside. Mathis. Well, he snuck behind Ben and laid it in. I think Ben wanted a traveling call. Mathis doing a good job to get loose. Good job by Drake down there against the man-to-man -man defense by the Blue Jays. Vernon Moore. Well, you let that kid that close to the basket, you might as well give him two. He's going to take it one way or the other. The game is tied once more. It's uncanny the way he's done that for the four years he has been at this school. Well, we've said it already, but the only knock against him in a pro career is he's 6'2". Lloyd short. Rebound to Benjamin. Good contest by Ball. Straight up on the shot. Bulldog still playing in that man-to-man. -man. You have to wonder with some of the one-on-one -on -one matchups that can uh, happen here, but the Bulldogs are able to pull this off. Fade away by Ball, won't go. Vernon almost got the rebound. Anderson pulls it down. Did you see Reggie Morris get over there and cut off the guard on the outlet there, Torrey? He got a foul earlier in the game trying to hustle to make that play. Well, I think with the team speed that Drake has, transition is important tonight, too. Lloyd finally finds his touch. His first two points of the night, and the Bulldogs are up by two. J.C. Leinbach, Ron Burkholz, and Charlie Payne, the officials tonight. Landreth has to come out top, Ben. He can hit from there, doesn't though. Mathis with a rebound. And I suppose Gary Garner wouldn't mind if Ben shot from there all night long. It's something uh, he would like to see, Torrey, because, you know, it's pretty much like using the USS Missouri to deliver the mail to Martha's Vineyard. 
Well, I'll tell you one thing's for sure. Ben can hit from outside, and he does. But in this ball game, especially since the Bulldogs are at a height disadvantage, again, if they can force Ben outside on the man-to-man, -man, then they're doing exactly what they want to do. And they're taking away a very potent offensive weapon in both shooting and rebounding by forcing Ben outside. We played five minutes. Bulldogs lead by two. They can go up by four. Moved into that zone. Now Drake has to get it in just like that. Team speed and nice moves by Darrell Lloyd. He has four, and the Bulldogs are up by 10. Man, they move that ball around quickly. Willis wants a timeout, and he gets it. Well, that's something I talked about earlier to you, Terry, before we came on the air, the fact that I thought that Drake's team speed and ability to handle the ball in Mathis and Lloyd was going to be important, and it's turned out that way so far. And especially when Creighton gets into a zone, they go 2-3. Drake recognizes it right away, and they get the movement in there. They're going to start penetrating against that uh, right off the bat. They look good in their zone offense. The most important thing is to be able to penetrate in there, get some good poise in there, Tori, and move the basketball around right along the lane. Well, we got in obviously on the tail end of that huddle, but Willis said, let's move, let's do something. We're not doing anything on defense. And he's right, they really aren't. Get the team going. Thursday night in the Valley, a big game. They go to Indiana State next. They're in a conference race. This is the Valley, and you're right up there battling for it. And so many event stories. It's fun before the game. Uh, we talked about Southern Illinois this evening at Wichita, and everybody's going to be doing this scoreboard watching here in the Civic Auditorium. So important to the Blue Jays, but the good thing for them is that they are in a position where they can control what happens to them. Ben's open on the weak side. As four, and the Jays come back to within two. Beautiful jump pass by Moore. And I'll tell you, it certainly has been a treat. It was a treat to do Creighton basketball last year, but this year even more so. What a battle between Mathis and Benjamin underneath. Ben trying to play behind him and deny him the basketball. Well, Mathis giving away five inches in height. Gary Swain got his hand in the way into this double trap work. No, Lloyd has it, dumps it off to Henderson on a nice pass. Lloyd looked left and threw right. Henderson has four to go with Mathis and Lloyd's four. And again, the Bulldogs are up by four. Drake almost turns it over there, and they get a good ratio and score. Reggie Morris can hit from there and does. Make it 12-10. The missing piece to this team, outside shooting, and he's providing it this year, and Creighton is 17-6. and six. Well, you know, I think probably, probably the only weakness the Blue Jays might have is experience coming off the bench. A lot of experience coming off the bench. Other than that, they're a pretty solid ball club. Glenn Martin with his first field goal of the night, and the Bulldogs go back up by four once again. Pretty good crowd for a Thursday night. You know, it surprised me Monday night with all the snow and the last place team in the conference. We almost broke 7,000 people. Mathis now fronting Benjamin. There he is trying to deny it. Bam! Ben has six. That might be the end of that strategy. That's a chance you take, and the weak side help wasn't there. He came right into the, at a right angle to the baseline. Well, that's twice now he's been wide open on the weak side. Mathis wants it in the post. They won't give it to him. Ben's right there with him. Henderson, Wyville Wood will check in for the Blue Jays, the next opportunity. Lloyd, they move that ball around really well. They go inside, Mathis fakes, Ben blocks it. Mathis keeps it alive, puts it off the glass, and Ben's present cost him a basket. What timing. Stays on his feet to the last possible second. Landreth Ball, Torrey doing a good job on defense too early for Creighton. Well, Landreth has really played some fine defense. They go inside to Ben, no basket. We're gonna have a foul. I believe it's on Daryl Lloyd. It's on Mathis, number 44. That's his first, team third. 
foul before the shot, so there'll be no free throws as Wyville Wood checks in. We'll see what Creighton does out underneath their own basket, Drake defensively in a zone. Now that kid's tough. Oh, he missed, tip up by ball, won't go. Comes out, Henderson has it. We're gonna have a foul on Reggie Morris. That's his second, team second. Crowd didn't like the call, but he was there. Ended up bumping in with the body. It looked like he was just standing there, and he ends up with the second personal. Hard luck fouls early for Reggie. Carlos Grappato now also checking in for Creighton at the scorer's table. Glenn Martin inside to Mathis. Mathis tried to go over Ben. It was denied, but Martin gets it on the kick out. Puts it up, won't go. And it'll go out of bounds off Lloyd. So it'll belong to Creighton. Now the fans, the official. Uh, Carlos Grappato comes in, but the official held his hand up to signal stoppage of play, and the people down that end of the arena thought he was signaling Drake's ball, so they started to get on him. That's an embarrassing situation for an official when it really happens, and he hears the crowd there, and uh, he didn't do anything. <laughs> They'll sag back when Grappato has it on the wing. Well, they go inside to Vernon Moore, and he just kind of found a path in there. Vernon has four. And this game is even and once again. So Drake has had a lead of uh, four points. And the game has been tied several times. We've played almost nine minutes. And we're gonna have a traveling call on Darrell Lloyd. He moved that foot before he put it to the floor. And that happens a lot, a lot more times than it's called. It's a tough call, and every time a rule book comes out, Tori, there, there's a big interpretation section on the traveling call. Vernon, it's good. Moore has six, the Jays up by two. Every time he goes to the basket with that move, it's like he's stopping in at the U.S. Patent Office with each one of those moves. Kid definitely has body control and ball control. New York City basketball. It's almost become a legend, New York City basketball. The number of guys that are on the asphalt courts in New York City that are NBA caliber but he'll never see the pros for one reason or another. Grappato with an uncontested rebound. And the Blue Jays can go up by four. Grappato on the far side. They're still in a man-to-man -man on defense. Vernon, got to get it out of there. Wyville Wood, he'll move laterally, put it up and in. Wyville with his first field goal of the night, and the Jays are up by four. What a pretty pull-up jumper on the dribble drive, and he squares himself, Torrey. Well, that's a tough shot to make when you're moving laterally, and you still put it in. Now Ben laying off Mathis now. Benjamin does so much defensively, he gets a foul there, but he can hang back underneath that basket, Torrey, and that allows Ball and Grappato and the other forwards do come up higher on the key and get out tough on the wing players. That's Ben's first, team third. Ben thought he had a clean steal coming, but he realized he did commit the foul. Henderson off the inbound, won't go. Rebound, weak side, Grappato. Jays can go up by six now. If they do, I can see Gary Garner calling a timeout. Whether he will or not will remain to be seen. Rebound, Lloyd. Ben missed from the free throw line. Benjamin came up high and he had three Bulldogs underneath the basket but they were easily able to get the rebound with him out of there now this Creighton ball club in particular Benjamin getting a lot of exposure nationally of course a couple weekends ago CBS did the feature on Willis and Ben as Glenn Martin picks up his first foul that's the team's fourth for Drake 9.09 remaining in this first half. But with Benjamin and Vernon Moore, the Blue Jays definitely have two bona fide All-Americans. This is a situation like Vernon Moore with the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, fancy dribble cost him. Can he catch up to Martin? He will. Martin stops and puts it up. 
He has four. You think announcers jinx these players, Tori? Well, you know, it seems like no matter what sport you're doing, when you make a comment about something, it either doesn't happen or the opposite happens. In and out, tip up ball, nice offensive rebound. Those are the kind of things that are so important and needed out of a forward. And Landreth has been able to do just that the last couple of weeks. Landreth is having a great game. Here he is now on Lloyd. Mathis over, uh, Ben won't go on. Vernon comes up with a rebound. Gary Swain waiting to check back in for Creighton. Coming down to the eight minute mark. Blue Jays up by four, can go up by six now. Been able to handle this Drake man-to-man -man fairly well once they got inside nine minutes. Nice help there for by Henderson on ball. Nice pass by Vernon, won't go. Ben got a little too hard. In the lane again, won't go. Rebound, Carlos won't go. Benjamin gets it stripped away by Butler. Nice pass to Henderson, but a little too fancy. Henderson wasn't ready for it. It goes back to Creighton. Well, you said that when Benjamin gets the basketball and he moves his hands up high, that Stephon Butler is going to be dangerous in that situation. Now, here's their sixth man they talked about. Dave Zing He's a freshman. Zing coming out of Middleton, Wisconsin. And Garner put him in. Seven and a half minutes to go. He's a good outside shooter. Have to see how he works on this man-to-man -man defense. And we'll have a whistle and a foul. And Glenn Martin, I believe, will pick up his second personal team, fifth for Drake. Again, a non-shooting violation as neither team is in the bonus. Carlos on the inbounds, can't do anything with it. Kind of a tough pass to handle, but Ben has it inside over Mathis is good. So Benjamin has eight. The beautiful low post up. Benjamin need, needs just 15 points to become the seventh all-time Creighton scorer. That'll put him right behind Vernon Moore, unless, of course, as I said earlier, Vernon scores 19. He'll move up to fifth. Kevin McKenna is currently ranked fifth in Creighton's all-time scoring list. Jay's enjoying a six-point lead. Swain working very hard in there, covering Stephon Butler, Torrey, following him all over, trying to deny him the basketball. Now Mathis is doing a good job inside, also with Ben. So they work that man-to-man. -man. Mathis not afraid to shoot. And then Landreth Ball has his first foul, team fourth. One thing about Melvin Mathis, He's giving away five inches in height to Benjamin, but he'll still put that ball up. They give it to him in the middle, and he'll put it up. It's turning out to be quite a matchup in there. Mathis, the consensus is he's a fine basketball player, and a lot of the Drake and Creighton people up on press row here were talking about that before the game. Freshman out of Papillion, Ed Johansson, number 25, is into the ball game for Creighton, and Damon Jones, number four, a sophomore from Detroit, will report in for Drake. Another 6'7 player. Well, Drake unable to score right in on the inbounds, which is what you'd really like to do. You like to score without even having to put the ball to the floor. Creighton in the 2-3 zone out underneath that basket. They stay in it. Jones with a nice baseline move, gets his own shot. And a traveling call will go against Jones. So Creighton gets the ball back. Have a chance to increase their lead to eight. Ed Johansson coming in off the bench regularly for Willis Reed does a fine job, especially against West Texas State on Monday. Ben looking for anybody. There you see the double team, Swain. Right-hander, won't go. Vernon Moore knocks it out. Gary gets it. 18-footer's good. He has four. Did you see that weak side help by Ross, and they ended up forcing Benjamin out, and he still got it to Swain, who ended up with that long shot. Now yeah, they call it teamwork. Jones can't move on Johansson, so Butler comes up on the swing, moves down the pocket to the lane. Martin out top. Now Dave Zing is considered one of the best outside shooters. Fakes. Moves hoop off the glass, won't go. Johansson with the board. 
Carlos got there with a nice contest on that shot. Well, what I mean by contesting is just get it going straight up and getting out there on a man who's shooting. Reggie Morris waiting to come in for Creighton. Now Ben on a fadeaway. Top, now Gary Garner wants a break. He wants to talk to his Bulldogs before it gets a little too crazy. Blue Jays lead it by 10, and there's five minutes exactly remaining in this first half. Drake's shooting percentage has been horrendous, but I can say this, some of their shots that they've missed have been inside, and I have to credit Ben's presence in the middle, particularly on some of Mathis' shots, as to why they're missing, but the, but the Bulldogs are getting inside. We're gonna have to take a look and see what Willis has to say during this timeout. First better job. Terry, if that strategy works, they're going to get 90 points by halftime. And he talked to Reggie Morris. Uh, he told Reggie, you have two points. Uh, let's get into the offense here. Uh, you're going to make us go along with Benjamin from out there. And he wants him to, to get the shots. And those should happen if they could get it down low to Ben. All right, the Bulldogs against some full court pressure. Inside five minutes in this first half. Martin working against that double team. Mathis, they kick it back out to Zing, back into Mathis. Oh, Butler was open on the back door and he couldn't handle the pass. Lead to Vernon, we're gonna have a foul. Now Damon Jones tried to stop Vernon from going into the stands, didn't work. And the fans will get all over Jones. How about that pass? How about the catch? That was really nice. Nice combination. They've done that all year pretty well. Benjamin on the outlet to Moore. Grappato with that outlet up the court. That should be the, that's the first foul on Jones. Should be team sixth. With 4.39 remaining, uh, Vernon will go to the line. He'll shoot two. Vernon sitting with six points. Vernon uh, on the year is a 78.2% free throw shooter. Rimmed it. You know, another thing Willis Reed said in the huddle, Torrey, we're playing good defense, let's keep it up, and Creighton really is improving on defense, and they're playing well tonight in this first half, and I was talking about Landreth Ball before he went out to take a breather. Now Vernon gets that one to go. He has seven. Jay's up by 11 now. Put on that pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, in the trap. And now they're going to drop, drop back into that zone. 1-3-1 one, one. running along the baseline is Reggie Morris. Well, they work baseline, and we're going to have a traveling call against Jones, and it goes back to Creighton. And again, Torrey Drake does a good job recognizing the weakness of a 1-3-1. One, one. They get it to the baseline, into the corner, and try and go along that line. Darrell Lloyd will come back into the ball game, along with Demetrius Henderson. Jones is going out along with Glenn Martin. You can just draw big circles on the blackboard on against a 1-3-1, one, one, a 2-3, showing where those weaknesses would be, where things might be open, where the seams are. Vernon Moore baseline. Vernon has nine. Willis loves to do that with him, post him up a little bit. He's such a great leaper and does so well down there in the air, as all the fans well know. Well, the kid's a great inside player with his ball handling ability and his quickness. Mathis hesitated a little too long. Had the baseline, wouldn't shoot it. Swain got on him. Henderson wants it. Will he shoot it? 
Well, he tries to go back door. Mathis had to contend with Reggie Morris, and it didn't work. Reggie does well back there on the 1-3-1. One, now one. Yeah, there's the turnover, and we're going to have a whistle, and they're looking at Gary Swain. He tried to get the ball back, committed the foul. For Swain, that's his first, Creighton's fifth team foul. 3.23 remaining in the first half. James with a 13-point advantage. Coach Reed is up talking to Gary Swain, and in that timeout where we were able to listen to Coach Reed, he was he was saying, well, let's have Gary bring it up, and we'll get uh, Vernon down low. And Willis wants these kids to handle the basketball, Renard Edwards and Gary Swain, because the man from New York, number 22 right there, he's going to graduate. Very good point, because they're going to need somebody to be able to take over that role. And Torrey was nice. Edwards played at Bradley as much as he did in that big win. Lloyd doesn't want to shoot it. Henderson almost lost it. Less than three minutes to go on the half. Working that trap. Ten seconds on the shot clock. They're going to have to do something with it. Henderson's good. Going to try and improve that percentage, that 45.1 field goal percentage in the Valley this year. Game clock, just the game clock continued to run. When they blew the whistle, there was 2.38 to go in this half, and they let the clock run while they tried to fix the net, and it's down to 2.32, and they started immediately. They don't hold it. They could have held it six counts. And I suppose if this was the last two and a half minutes of the ball game, they probably, Gary Garner would have been watching that very closely. But the way Creighton has been hitting from the field, he doesn't care if uh, six seconds less than a half. And like that, that shot by Morris won't count because he took some steps. Renard Edwards is into the ball game for the first time tonight. Re-entering with him is Landreth Ball. And it appeared that Ed Johansson and Vernon Moore will get a break. 2.13 remaining in the half. The Jays up by 11. Let's see what kind of pressure Drake will put on defense against Renard Edwards when Creighton has to move it up the floor. What a battle inside. Mathis against Benjamin. Benjamin coming around the front, Torrey. Dave Zing will come up short, but it comes down to Mathis. Can he move over Ben? Ben just slams it back in his face. Edwards takes it, left of the key, off the glass, won't go. Nobody there for an offensive board. Nice block out by Mathis. You see him kick that outlet. Henderson's wide open. He'll hit. He has eight. And now it's a nine-point ball game with a minute and a half to go in the half. Drake on the secondary break to Henderson in the corner. First options weren't there, and they just swung it around. Denied inside. Henderson controls. So again, the quickness of the Bulldogs coming into play as we come down to a minute 10. They can cut the Blue Jay lead to seven. Mathis is open, but he hesitates. He's in the post again, fakes. Dumps it out to Henderson, it's stolen. Knocked away by Morris. Swain has it, one on one with Butler. Spin around, dumps it off to Morris, it's good. Gary Swain with a 360 assist. What a nice break. What great poise by Swain and Benjamin down against Mathis. Made that go with the good timing, staying on his feet. Cleared out the other end. Count it down with us. It's about a second difference in the shot clock and the game clock right now. Well, now Creighton doesn't have to worry about giving it up. Three Blue Jays are the boards. Morris was there, Swain got it, and Ben was there. Edwards looking toward the bench to get some instruction from Willis. Ten seconds. Do you see it? They're going to have to start making their move to the hoop. Inside Benjamin, three seconds. It's good, and that's the half. So Ben ends the first half with a fine shot at the buzzer. Has 12 points in this half. And the score at halftime is Creighton up by 13 points. Terry and I will be back with first half stats and second half action.
February is Black History Month, and this week on Here's Looking at You, Omaha, we have special features on adoption homes for minority children, a preview of a Black History program sponsored by the National Council of Negro Women, plus we'll talk to our friends at the Omaha Children's Museum and visit with the Omaha Ballet's guest choreographer. Please join Dorothy Lombardo and myself for Here's Looking at You, Omaha, Monday through Thursdays at 6 p.m. right here on Cox 9. About a couple of minutes away from the start of the second half. The Blue Jays with a commanding 13-point lead at this point. Terry has the stats. Torrey for Drake, 37% from the field in that first half. And they did not figure from the free throw line. So there was no attempts up there, no percentage. And rebounds, uh, Creighton by five and there are the total points field goal percentage a big number for the week for Creighton they are leading the country in field goal percentage 57 percent for the Blue Jays Vernon Moore had a couple of free throw attempts so he was able to hit on one of those for 50 percent the 16 rebounds the total points Creighton it's been a tough sledding inside there, Torrey. Mathis is playing well. Daryl Lloyd inside. So, you know, the rebound difference is, is 16. Creighton has 16 and to the 11 for the Bulldogs. Of course, uh, in the turnover department, something everybody looks at. Blue Jays committing six the first half. Drake only seven. So you look at their Drake's shooting percentage of 37 from the field, and therein lies a good tale as to why they're down by 13. But again, the defense, specifically Ben, but I think a key that people overlook only because he doesn't do it with a lot of flair, and it's Landreth Ball, but he just helps out so well, and something we talked about earlier. Benjamin, of course, with that nice basket at the buzzer in the first half, ends with uh, 12 points in the first half, and Vernon Moore has nine. The top scorer for the Drake Bulldogs is Demetrius Henderson with eight. I think, I think honestly, Terry, this half, that if Drake was to stay with a man-to-man, uh, they're really going to find themselves down by a lot more points than they are now. When, when the coaching staff told me before the game that they were going to play a lot of man-to-man, -man, I thought, well, I mean, you're the coach. You know what you're doing. You know what you want to accomplish. But with the way they're outmanned uh, height-wise, and man-to-man -man just sits up great one-on-one -on -one situations for Vernon Moore, and that's exactly what's been going on. Going to have to try and use their speed. That must be what Gary Garner is thinking, but it's going to wear them down, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on the weak side part of the defense, the side away from the basketball, as Gary Garner was an assistant at Missouri when they really started rolling in the late 70s, an assistant to Norm Stewart. He came into the Valley. His first year at Drake was the same year that Willis Reed started here at Creighton, 81-82. But I'm surprised with Stephon Butler on the point for the Drake Bulldogs that they haven't done a little more pressure and try and get that turnover number up against Creighton because the book on Creighton is, let's press them. They blew a 19-point lead in Tulsa, and they had a lot of problems with the press. Well, you know, one thing you, told, you talk about Butler, in which you saw him draw his foul that way, trying to stick his hand in there and strip the, the ball inside. He has 25 steals on the year. And the kid definitely is quick. He's a good ball handler. He has 119 assists. So I agree with you there. He hasn't. They haven't been able to utilize his ability. But of course, when you go man to man like that, and you've been able to keep Benjamin on the baseline, sometimes maybe five, six feet away, he's not going to have too much of an opportunity to strip the ball. On the alternating rule, the Bulldogs get the ball in possession as we start the second half. We're underway. The Blue Jays up by 13. Big, big Valley game for these Blue Jays. They win, and that just climbs them closer and closer to the top. Wichita State sitting at 8-1. They're entertaining Southern Illinois tonight. Tulsa lost uh, Wednesday night to Illinois State. Mathis again. He can't buy a basket. Just can't do it. Ben gets the board, and the Blue Jays will bring it down the other way. Swain with the basketball is a point guard here, and there goes Vernon towards the baseline, just out of sight to the right. Landreth off the glass, gave it a little bit too much touch, but he gets it back, and we're going to have a foul, and it's on Butler. That's his third, Terry, team first this half. We talked about that early. He got the quick two fouls in that first half. One of them was trying to take the basketball away, and that's what he does well. Reggie Morris for Creighton Torrey has two fouls. 
from that first half also. That's the only real foul trouble for Creighton. Three fouls on Butler now, and Gwen Martin has a couple. Swain will handle the inbounds as they break that box around the lane. Morris. Sweet shot, and he gets the Blue Jays on the board first in this half. 15-point advantage for the Blue Jays, and unless things really get crazy, they'll probably increase it. That opens up so many options. It's like a football team running the veer of the wishbone. Well, you know, the Blue Jays seeming to play with a lot more attention tonight than they did on Monday night. Henderson has 10. And I guess sometimes it is. It's hard when you're on a roll like the Blue Jays are. It's hard to get up for a team that's last in the conference. Plus, the weather wasn't really all that pleasant. A lot of things come into play. But 6,764 people showed up Monday night to cheer this Blue Jay team on to victory. Dan Offenberger said it would be exciting in 77-78 when Creighton got back into the valley, and it certainly is exciting to be in a conference. Now Landreth Ball blocked out of there nicely by Mathis, so the Bulldogs come away with a rebound. They want to run. Demetrius uh, dumps it off to Mathis, who finally gets a basket inside. He has six points on the night. Drake fills the passing lanes well down the court. They get that basket. Good transition. Yeah, they keep Ben outside. He puts it up, won't hit, but Ball with a nice offensive rebound. Tip up, Ben won't go. Tip is still going up. Finally pulled in by Drake Henderson. A tough shot by Benjamin, but Landreth Ball in there playing well, working hard. Pass stolen by Ben, and then he lost it. It'll belong to Drake. Gary Swain also doing a good job. He got his hand on that pass. You see how quick Benjamin got across there. And you could leave him back there, and that allows the other players to stay up higher. You don't usually want to give that baseline too much, and Creighton has to be aware of it. Vernon Moore overplaying there. Didn't cost him. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I don't know, Terry, how do you feel about passing the ball to a guy inside who's three feet from you? That's what... <laughs> And then you have Benjamin in there filling up a lot of space. And Digger Phelps uses that term. Get a big guy in there and fill it up. Glenn Martin. So the Blue Jays have been outscored 6-2 to two here in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Power play by Vernon Moore. Beautiful move. Virtually unstoppable when he gets inside. He got by his defensive man, and it was almost a blocking foul there. He got by him so fast. It really didn't seem that way, but there he was. Still trying to work inside to Mathis. No basket. Ben just picked up a second foul. That's the team first this half. You know, not an easy road for anybody. We said Wichita State entertaining Southern Illinois as uh, Willis wants a timeout. The Blue Jays, after this game, will hit the road and go to Terre Haute on the 9th for a game against Indiana State. Then they come back next week, and in consecutive games, Wichita State and Tulsa come in. But while, while the Blue Jays will be in Terre Haute taking on Dave Shellhouse's Indiana State Sycamores, Wichita State and Tulsa will be mixing it up down in Wichita. That also is a big, big matchup, important to the Blue Jays, but they can't be watching that scoreboard the ninth as much as the Sycamores remember what happened when they came to Omaha a few days ago, and they're going to be ready for the Blue Jays. 115 points were scored against them, and that could be a problem when it comes back to haunt you in Terre Haute. Creighton traditionally has played very well in the Hillman Center on the campus of Indiana State University. A crucial win there. We'll go back to 78 on that one, Tori. Sure. Creighton won the regular season Valley Championship that year by getting the thing won on the road. They had the crucial win that year at Indiana State, and then the big victory, season finale, Southern Illinois, Rick Apke, the picture that a lot of fans remember, the Southern, Il Southern Illinois students in the end zone. And so it could end up that way this year. Creighton has a rugged road to end this season on the road. Well, you know, should they hang through all of this as Lloyd goes up from the baseline and hits his first field goal of the half, of this half, he has six points on the night. 
They will have earned it because they have those last three Valley games on the road. And then, of course, they finish up, as you mentioned earlier, with a good non-conference game against Dayton. But they're so uh, enraptured right now with the Valley Conference that they could not worry about Dayton. As Landreth Ma does a good job on a weak side offensive rebound. Weak side, the key there, Tori. You said it. Three players collapsed around Benjamin, and he snuck in there. Again, Lander doing the thing you need to do as a power forward to be able to make this team work and be successful. It's nice to have Ben and Vernon, but sometimes those guys need a break as Glenn Martin pops one in from outside. He has eight. And here's the only pressure Drake has put on throughout this game. Just some man token pressure and Creighton able to clear right out and go one on one with the guards. Vernon with a big slide move. Lloyd blocks it from behind. And the Bulldogs can cut the J lead to seven. Mathis on left handed layup on a nice give and go on the break. He has eight. Now it's a seven point ball game. And the Bulldogs momentum has shifted back to Drake somewhat. You can see the change in their faces. Another good transition basket by the Drake Bulldogs. Swain up top, won't go. Rebound comes down to Henderson on the far side. They can crawl to within five points here. And Daryl Lloyd hasn't even got warmed up yet. Pulls up, won't go, rebound Swain. Big rebound for the Blue Jays. That time Creighton really concentrated on getting back into their defense. Benjamin didn't go for that offensive board when Ball flew through there. He was getting back to work on Mathis. Yeah, they're still in that matchup. Vernon having trouble inside. Sometimes Creighton with a great driving player like Vernon Moore will get caught inside with no safeties back. Offensive foul on Benjamin, his third foul. Second team foul this half as Y. Bill Wood will check in for Creighton. Well, ben tried to Ben tried to back his way in, and I was going to make mention of that, and then they blew the whistle, so it doesn't make any difference. 14-43 left, he gets that. Gary Garner, everything looking good over on that bench now. Well, they had a chance to cut it to five last possession. They did not. Let's see what Drake does here. Henderson, bad shot. Lloyd, blocked by Benjamin. Swain takes it on the outlet. Reggie's open, fakes the shot. You have to commit to him because he'll hit from there. Wyville uses Ben, passes it off just in time as he got sealed out on the baseline underneath. The man defense. So twice now the Blue Jays have been able to deny Drake to crawl to within five. We'll have a whistle. Basket's good by Benjamin. It's on Mathis. His second, team second. Nothing warms the heart of a Creighton basketball fan, Tori, than seeing Benjamin go to work inside the lane there. You know, you we went through the 70s with great teams, but we never had the so-called aircraft carrier that the term Al McGuire popularized so much on national television. And Benjamin has certainly provided that the best center that Creighton has had in so many years, and probably the best talent in there since Cyril Baptiste from 14 years ago. And Ben now has just tied Eddie Cole for seventh place in Creighton's all-time scoring list. They both sit with 1,437 career points, and Ben still has the rest of this season and another season after this. Some great company in that scoring list, led by the Creighton immortal Bob Portman. Played his pro ball out on the West Coast. Nice follow-up by Mathis. Thirteen and a half minutes to go. The Blue Jays own an eight-point lead. Mathis now trying to deny the basketball from Benoit Benjamin. Reggie, that shot is blocked by Martin, but he'll pull the foul out front 15 feet away. His third, team third. So you know, Drake now has uh, Butler and Martin with three fouls. You know, excuse me, Tori. Drake are giving away that height, but when that shot went airborne, you could really see Mathis clearing out very well in there. They had very good position. Benjamin was way on the outside. Reggie 
Shooting 75% from the line. Jays can go back to a double digit lead if he can hit both of these. Now he has seven on the night. He's so important to this team and last year he came off the bench to set up the exciting finish to last year when he in that quarterfinal game against Bradley uh, we were in trouble down here at the auditorium and Reggie Morris came off the bench played so well in the second half. Well Darrell Lloyd is coming to the ball game or re-entered the ball game I should say Dave Zing also. So Jay's back up by 10. Stephon Butler not being much of a, Ben blocks another shot. From the weak side, semi-weak side, he was pretty much in the middle. Wyville just did get the far side of the rim. Under 13 minutes. Swain late with the trap there. Oh, Butler, nice move, but he missed the shot. So the Blue Jays get a chance once more to go up by a dozen. Morris won't go, rebound Butler. Gary Swain goes to the corner on what they call a secondary break, Torrey, and Vernon chose to go into the middle there, but he has Swain on that Creighton break. Now yeah, Wyville Wood gets whistled for the foul. The official on that side says that uh, Wyville got Lloyd on the wrist. So Lloyd will go to the line and shoot two. Lloyd on the air, 77% free throw shooter. Now yeah, you know we might have 12, 29 remaining, but these free throws look so important. Shoots him just like his brother. Daryl Lloyd, one of the greatest players in the history of the Missouri Valley Conference and one of the greats at Drake University, and they have such a great tradition. And we have a timeout on the floor with 12.29 remaining. Gary Garner wants the timeout. And the Blue Jays lead it 44-36. to And they've been able to maintain the lead this half, although the Bulldogs cut into it as they enjoyed a 13-point lead. But the Bulldogs now have climbed, they climbed to within seven, had a chance twice to make it five. Let's listen to Willis. These guys. The next day, we've got to move the ball. We've got to do a little more pace. We're going to stay in the 32, guys, until I tell you why. Okay? Come on, it's going to work out. We're messing around with this team. We're going to be struggling with it. We've got to get in and get, get this thing up and get some things, get some things done. We've got to have good shots, guys. We've got to have good shots, and we've got to move the basketball. Hey, come on, let's go to work. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. We're in motion now. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. We're in motion. He wants to get that good movement. And, Tori, I think Creighton's become a very good offensive team this year. And the 45-second clock, I believe, has helped this team. It's helped to bring Gary Swain back into the offense after struggling early in the season. It's helped Landreth. Reggie Morris has come along. There, there's a much better offensive flow, flow out there. there. The team has a tremendous amount of purpose on the offensive end of the court now. Well, you know, we talked about that earlier, and I, I like the, the fact that as far as being a following Creighton every year, this cl shot clock has helped them to become a smoother team offensively. Some teams, sometimes it makes them hurry too much, but it makes the Blue Jays have to think, and look, uh, Darryl Lloyd has just picked up his first personal team fourth. He tried to steal the ball from Ben coming behind on the baseline. But the shot clock, that's a good point to make. The Blue Jays have played a lot better with a shot clock than they have without it. And that's a lot for me to admit, being a, a Creighton fan and part of it through the 70s when we had that five-game, four-corners type offense that Eddie Sutton put in and Apke continued. And you can't do it with that shot clock. Fade away, won't go, rebound Lloyd. Kicks it out to Henderson, he's gonna lose it. Now, Demetrius Henderson um, all night long has had trouble handling the outlet passes. Right away, Gary Garner's going to give him a rest. You can't squander opportunities on the road the way the Bulldogs have, especially against a team that has the talent Creighton has. And 
man-to-man defense late in the game. Vernon won't get the roll. We have a whistle. It's on Martin. That is his fourth, and he just came back into the ball game. That's Drake's fifth team foul. 11.52 to go on the Blue Jays, enjoying an eight-point lead. Glenn Martin of Drake comes from Carbondale. He got away from the Salukis. He's a freshman. But, Tori, you see what I mean talking about the shot clock in relation to Creighton's traditionally like that four corners and it's tough to kind of give they have to give that up like they have to in the conference. Vernon misses second free throw of the night. And I wasn't sure, of course it doesn't make any difference how I feel obviously, but I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy the shot clock or not in college and for the most part I think I do because it's made them play well this the, the conferences that use the shot clock they play a really good brand of offense they have to play good disciplined offense and take good shots rather than just set up in the four corners and you know go five ten minutes without doing anything one two two Creighton might trap out of it forget it there Mathis has 12 and it cut the J lead to seven and that's from the strength of that type of zone pressure he shot that from. Now well, the, the spurt at the start of the second half, even though great trails, and it Swain loses it out of bounds. But that spurt you look for at the start of the second half had to go to in Drake's favor. Even though they still trail, they were able to cut into that Blue Jay lead and not let the game get out of hand. And now Basket here will bring them to within five with 11 minutes remaining. And they've been in the situation twice before, cutting a lead to five. This time Henderson does. He has a dozen also. What concentration by Demetrius Henderson, just looking at his face as he shot that towards the basket. It was going in right out of his hands. Vernon with that big pass. Ben comes up short, and Henderson chases it down. Does a good job to hang on to the ball. I think if Drake gets a basket here. We might see Willis call a timeout. Henderson's open. He puts it up. It's short. Follows it up. Double pumps. And the foul is going to be on Benjamin, and Henderson will get two. Well, that's Ben's fourth. Now what do you do, Coach? 10.26 to go. There you see Willis obviously has to be concerned. Most important point of the basketball game now. The foul and a chance to cut at the three here. Well, you know, I, I talked the last couple of days about how dangerous this Drake ball club can be because of their determination, and they have good team speed. And they've been playing well. Yes. They're highly regarded, and we've been seeing them on television the last couple of weeks. They sh came very close to beating Tulsa at home. Now the Blue Jays are going to have to really pay attention to what they do. That'll be short. We can make, we can have a one-point ball game on a basket here. And you can look at that bulldog bench. They can smell it, Terry. Oh, on that referee's whistle, that fourth foul against Benjamin, they were up off the bench. They're very much, look at the flash post. Let's see if they try to continue to work on Ben inside. Mathis has had pretty much success right there on the weak side from the baseline. Right there. Won't go this time, but he follows it up. Lost it. Benjamin has it. And alertly, the big kid gives it up to the ball handlers. Creighton has to get to their spots when they're blocking out, and it's tough to do in a zone defense. You don't have the crisp assignments that you would on blocking out when you're running a man-to-man. -man. Well, they need that basket now. Vernon in the lane. Triple pumps. Dumps it off to Ben. Whistle inside, and we're going to have a pushing foul from behind. Morris, 6-2, and he flashes up high, and he draws the foul there, and he's been able to do that throughout the season. Willis has had him down low and brought him up high, and it's really helped Creighton. Now for Henderson, that is his first personal team sixth. So the Blue Jays, although Ben has four, the next foul by Drake will put Creighton into the bonus. 
Not quite an equalizer, but it doesn't hurt as Ben hits. Oh, that was a big basket. That puts the Blue Jays up by five, wherein they could have been ahead by just one. Big, big possession there. Anderson drives, changes. Zing, Hill, miss. Rebound knocked away from Ben. Henderson underneath. It's no good. Rebound by Baugh. Oh, what a turn of events. Gary Garner's beside himself over on the Drake bench. Garner wanted a push against Reggie Morris in there. Somebody should be open. Morris is good. Now Reggie has 10, and the Jays are up by seven now. And where I thought it would be Willis Reed calling the timeout, it's Gary Garner over on the Drake bench. Whoa, the Blue Jays able to turn what could have been disastrous into a really good situation for them now. Benjamin makes like a hubcap in there, a wheel turning, and he knows where Reggie Morris is. He knows where Gary Swain is. He, those holes, they call them hole story, they're numbered, and he's able to turn, go to the two hole, the three hole. Reggie Morris was in that slot there, you can think of it that way, and he was wide open for that shot, and that's just a big part of that offense. So, what about that? Yeah, but I'm still saying, you gotta be, see, you way up here, you, you're too high up. You need to be down here so you can be on the direct pass so you can see him, you understand what I'm saying? What about a white? Patience on the offense. He also got in a, I believe it was Vernon Moore. He said Vernon was playing too high. And he wants to stop Melvin Mathis and Daryl Lloyd from the corner. He was pointing in there. You have to get out there. You have to have vision to see that player in there. And Drake has been hurting Creighton from the corner. They might go into a 1-3-1. I thought he might have said that in that huddle. We'll see what Creighton does on defense here. Well, at this point in the ball game, you don't really want to get in a shooting match with Drake because they're either real good or they're real bad, and they seem to have found their eye this half. Henderson has 16. There goes the zone defense. Now it's a five-point ball game once again. Drake still in the man-to-man. -man. Reggie trying to get loose on the weak side. Comes up the lane, has it on this wing. Ben on the far side, can't get loose of Mathis, so Vernon's gonna try and kicks it back out to Ben. Ben looking to Reggie on the near corner. Works on Zing, Swain. Ball's open, but he won't shoot from there. Reggie at the top of the key, will put it up. Won't go, rebound Lloyd, uncontested board. So we could have another three-point game coming up. Mathis sure kept Benjamin out of the offense there. He was denying him the basketball. Ended up forcing him outside at one point. Stephon Butler really hasn't been all that much into the defensive game as I thought he would. Zing, Henderson, didn't get the touch he wanted on that. Looked as though he might have put it up. He's been hitting from there. Mathis continuing to be tough inside with Ben. Lloyd outside now on the baseline, Zing three-point area. Now yeah, you make it 49-46 now. Yeah, we've been here before, and the Blue Jays ran off six straight points. They kept the basketball away from the side that Landreth Ball was on. He was kind of in a 3-2 or 2-3 zone. He was dropping into that corner, and they just came up high. Ooh, almost problem there as Vernon got his hand on it. It was intended for Reggie in the air corner. Gary Swain. To Ben inside, force the shot, won't go. Rebound by Ball, puts it up, it's good. Oh, Landreth Ball does it again and again and again. He's been aggressive all night, going to the basket, playing good defense. Let's see him down here in the Creighton 2-3. He'll be very active in that corner. There he is, number 40. Arms Butler. wide. Now we have Reggie on the foul as Butler tried to make the move. For Morris, that is his third, team fourth, non-shooting violation. 
There you see that Drake bench. Five point advantage for the Blue Jays. 6.05 remaining. There's a good baseline defense. And it, Landreth knocked it out of bounds on the far side. Still belong to Drake, but it's so important to be able to get your hand in there. Reggie Morris played him towards the higher part of the court. He knew Benoit Benjamin was there. Benjamin turns and no more baseline. One of the many advantages of having someone like Benjamin. Butler puts it over Ben. Will he get the bounce? No, and Landreth Ball gets the rebound. When Gary Swain brings the basketball down here, Reggie Morris circles into the corner on a kind of secondary break. They don't need it here. Drake is back. Now turn around by Ben is good. And we're going to have a foul up front. That's Melvin Mathis's third foul, and that puts the Bulldogs over the limit. Ben will have a chance to complete the three-point play, has 19 points right now, as Carlos Grappato will check in. He's and had, excuse me, Tori, Benoit has had a lot of success in the second half, flashing up high, the flash post. He put a clinic on there. It's a quick hitting play where he just comes up high. He stayed towards the middle of the lane that time, and he's making that turnaround jumper automatic. Yeah, it won't go, so Ben still has 19, five and a half minutes to go. Get Blue Jays over. up by seven. Yeah, really, this is a dangerous team that has been playing very well. Mathis, air ball. And we'll have a foul on Lloyd. Well, Gary Garner not liking that one too well. Lloyd second, so Ben will get the one and one now. Yeah, this is an important position for the Blue Jays to be in because Ben has been playing with four fouls for most of this half, and they're in the bonus, so they can continue to add to this lead, 53-46 at this point. You know, I begin to wonder what what the Bulldogs would be like after seeing them twice before tonight. I mean, both, they lost heartbreakers, uh, heartbreakers both times. I begin to wonder what they'd be like if they had another power big man, maybe 6'10" because there's just no way that Mathis and Lloyd are going to be able to play with Benjamin one-on-one. -on -one. Now Ben has 20 points as he misses the second half of that bonus, and it's an eight-point game now. Well, Torrey, there's been some criticism in the Des Moines media of Gary Garner's recruiting and not having some more size. Lloyd, baseline won't go. Benjamin tipped that ball away from Mathis. So the Jays are looking at a 10-point lead if they can get a two-pointer here. Inside to Benjamin, fade away, won't go. Rebound, Butler. Well, they've got two on one, two on two. Henderson lost it. Good job, Gary Swain. Vernon lays it off for Landreth Ball. We have an offensive foul on Vernon Moore. His first team fifth. Fans don't like it, obviously as Glenn Martin is at the scorer's table. Martin will come in. Well, two good defensive plays. Dave Zing for Drake got back against Vernon Moore and got himself set according to the official and Gary Swain got back quickly for Creighton and came up with a steal there. Yeah, you don't like to see turnovers, but if this game continues to be a, a game of Drake turn it over and then Creighton turn it over. It's not going to hurt the Blue Jays on the scoreboard anyway. Butler, nice hustle, hits. That kind of stuff will hurt the Blue Jays. That's Butler's first field goal of the night. And he cuts the Creighton lead to six. Opportunistic and very quick. He came right at it there. Ben still trying to shake loose of Mathis. Swain is open. Nice move to get loose. Won't go though. Rebound comes down to Lloyd. Landreth doing a good job behind. He almost got that rebound behind, from behind him. Avoided the foul. Butler drives. I think he took some steps. 
Good defense out front by the Blue Jays to force that turnover. And Benjamin along the back line, and that caused the traveling. He knew he was down there. You know, Torrey, we talked about Drake being in the man-to-man -man defense for most of this game. Could it be that, well, we won't press, and I thought they might press more. We'll save that energy because we're going to need it if we're going to be coming down on our end half court with the man-to-man. -man. Well, three and a half minutes to go in this ball game. It's tough to play that man-to-man -man defense. You have Zing denying the basketball on the wing to Reggie Morris. And it takes a lot of hustle. There he had to cut him off as Reggie fainted towards the baseline. Now 10 seconds on the shot clock now. They're going to have to make a move and they lose it. Good defense. Well, they fill the lanes. Lloyd cuts across the lane and ball blocked the shot. But Landreth picks up the foul. His second. Team sixth. Well, a good play by Landreth Ball, but he got the foul. It's really tough. And it does put the Blue Jays, I said it was their sixth, that puts the Blue Jays over the limit. They have seven now. So now both teams are in the bonus. Lloyd will get to shoot two. Fouled in the act of shooting. He has nine. 2.58 to go. Four-point ball game. Oh, that backspin. Gary Garner wants another timeout. So with 2.58 to go, it's 54.50. Creighton hanging on by four. Garner with one timeout left. Torrey, it would be kind of nice to get over to Veterans Auditorium for the game between Creighton and Drake over there. That's well, going to be a toughie. Be quite a matchup, and it's going to be awful important. Well, that ball game, of course, will be uh, coming up on February 26th. That's your next to last game of the season, last conference game. Hold on, man. It's a ball game. Hey, we have one, guys. We've got to have a little more patience. Can you, you just take the ball in and you know, 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 Let's run three games. Run three. Alright? Let's run three games. Let's try to get the ball. Get, you two guys start on the same side. Okay? You start two guys start on the side. Now we're going to hand the ball in front. Now don't, don't turn the ball in uh, No, no, I tell Gary, you hand the ball up in front. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go. Alright, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, we're back in red on the other end. Well, he, want, he wants Gary Swain to handle the ball. They're going to play three game on offense. And he calls his defensive signals there, calls it a red. We'll see what that defense is. Could there be clear out ramifications from that offense? He was talking about getting two guys on one side. That's a great play in the NBA. They love to clear out one side and then get a one-on-one -on -one situation, particularly if there's a mismatch. Well, you know, with Vernon Moore out there, and of course the way Gary Swain has shown his ball handling ability, Renard Edwards is into the lineup. Landreth Ball has taken a break. Again, token pressure, man pressure, and Creighton just runs their people right down the floor, leaving it for Vernon Moore. Zing on Morris. Ben wanted the ball, but they couldn't get it to him. Mathis now doing a good job fronting him. There it goes, inside to Ben. Ben with a good job to keep it alive. Mathis got his hand in Ben's face, but Ben using his height as Vernon Moore missed. Lloyd takes the rebound. That man-to-man -man defense does keep Vernon Moore and Renard Edwards from penetrating, particularly against a 2-3 zone, and the man-to-man -man hurts that, and they're not getting the shots from the wing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Bulldogs treat this. Ben has four fouls. Stephon Butler's driven to the hoop a couple of times. Mathis on the fadeaway. We have a two-point ball game, Terry, and things aren't as bright as they were five minutes ago. 
Creighton with three timeouts left, and it's going to the wire. You can even feel a tentativeness in the crowd. And no problem for Drake in their man-to-man -man defense here. They have all the energy they need. Now watching Mathis hand check Ben, watching Ron Burkholz down low. Oh, big basket by Gary Swain. He really recognized that. Lloyd was playing off him and he couldn't get out there in time. He just shot it. Henderson answers. Torrey, the same situation right back the other way. Henderson recognized that Renard Edwards wasn't going to get squared up in time to defense him. Wow, we're coming down to a minute right now. And the Blue Jays almost threw it away. Well, they have a two-point lead here, and they have to get a shot off. We'll have a foul. It's on Dave Zing, and he doesn't believe it. That'll send Swain to the line for the one-and-one. One. Finally able to get some penetration. Gary Swain handling the ball pretty well tonight. And he might have saved the season as far as the conference goes by saving the basketball from going out of bounds on this possession. Well, Landreth Ball will check in quickly. For the Blue Jays, Renard Edwards is out. Yeah, I think Renard got crossed up on that pass down here to the near corner. Nobody was there, but Gary did a good job. He was actually out of bounds when he was able to, when he was in the air as he grabbed that ball and threw it back in. It's a scary situation. This is just like that Bradley game that really put Creighton, a good basketball team, in a hole in this conference. They've been digging out of it, but you can't lose at home. Doesn't look good. It isn't. Rebound comes down to Lloyd. We're looking at a tie ball game. And I'll tell you what, there's only a two-second difference in the game clock and the shot clock, Terry, if there's that many seconds between. Gary Garner wants a timeout. 39 seconds to go. The Blue Jays with a two-point lead, but Drake has the ball. They have the momentum. The clock is on their side, and the fact that uh, they have time to put up a shot, if they miss, get an offensive board, which they've been able to do a couple of times tonight, and still have the clock run out, and we'll go into overtime. And Creighton cannot foul. The basketball is in the hands of Drake, and that's always a worry. But you have a master underneath the basket who's going to be guarding down there, and Benoit Benjamin, and he should be able to avoid doing that. I'll take the tie certainly over the three-point play and somebody standing at that line with one second left. Well, obviously, I think, I think that if their Drake strategy is to drive the lane, which they haven't been able to do with success because of Landreth Bond, specifically Ben tonight, you know, I would expect the Blue Jays just to clear out, give them the lane. Uh, you don't want to go into overtime anytime, but when you're at home, it makes it a little bit easier. It's going to be interesting to see how they come up on this. Well, Demetrius Henderson, good shooter from outside tonight, and he's helped that shooting percentage for the Drake Bulldogs. And then you also have the possibility of Gary Garner saying, hey, Melvin Mathis, Daryl Lloyd, you played well tonight. Let's go after the seven-footer and see if we could win it and get him, get him a foul, foul him out of the basketball game, and go to the line and take the lead. Well, in a, in a jump ball situation, the ball will go to the Blue Jays. You have to think of something like that. Although, you're right, you don't want to get into a foul situation. Less than half a minute to go. Right now, the Blue Jays need a steal. Man-to-man -man defense, Swain, he's right on Stephon Butler and denying him the pass. Well, against Tulsa, they didn't get the shot off. Lloyd shot is up, it's no good, Benjamin gets the rebound. 10 seconds left, and there's the foul on Henderson. Seven seconds remain, the Jays are up by two. Reggie will go to the line for one and one. The defensive stopper, Torrey, they did their job down there, and they have themselves, because of the defensive play, in a position to win a, a tough basketball game against a great rival. I hope. <laughs> well, intentional foul. Reggie will get two. First one, 
slides through easily. He has 11 on the night, but more importantly, it gives the Jays a three-point lead. You're not going to say he'll salt it away with, if he gets this one, but it's going to make it awful tough on Drake. And Creighton can let Drake score and just hold the basketball here. Anderson gets his 20th point. Bulldogs unable to call the timeout. They'd use them all, and that's it. Well, that's it. This ball game is over. The Blue Jays with a big conference win, 58 to 56 over Drake Terry. And I'll be back to wrap this thing up. Well, the final score, Creighton up by two when time ran out, and it was kind of scary down there the last two and a half, three minutes. And a big, big ball game. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, this, we said at the start of this thing it wouldn't be a gimme ball game, and it sure wasn't. Drake has been much improved. They played well here tonight, and they came in here on our home floor, a tough rival, Tory, and could have really ruined things for the Blue Jays if Creighton would have lost this ball game on their home court in the conference. Well, you know, of course, I think uh, one of the big keys, again, was the play of Ben Benjamin. Specifically tonight, he drew his fourth foul and early in the second half, and things could have been a lot more sticky, but he got some great support, and he played not afraid of the fifth foul. Of course, he ended up with 20 points, but I'll tell you, one of the, one of the happiest things is I like to see is the way that Landreth Ball and Reggie Morris were playing tonight. A really nice way to round out that starting five. We know that Vernon Moore and Benjamin could play. Gary Swain showed how good he was. So now they've got everything running really well. In a game like this, I think, maybe a, maybe a year or so ago, two years ago, the Blue Jays might have not won this ball game, but they've been able to play together as a team now, and they've really gelled well. Tori, you know what I think the difference is when you talk about two years ago when Benjamin was a freshman? It's... It's defense. They came up with a defensive play down here tonight, and Drake had a chance to tie it, and Creighton came up with a defensive stopper. They made the play against DePaul last year on New Year's Eve day. They should have won that basketball game, but they just couldn't stop Tyrone Corbin and DePaul, and this year they're making the defensive plays. That's right. Well, they hit the road, and they'll be going to Terre Haute for a game with the Sycamores on the ninth, and then they come back... Uh, I should say, yeah, they play the Sycamores on the night. Then they come back and play Wichita State and Tulsa back-to-back. -back. Big, big ball games for the Blue Jays. Sports now will be here for both those ball games. Tori Pantaleon for Terry Leahy and everyone else on the Cox Cable Omaha Sports Night crew. Thanks for being with us for Blue Jay basketball, and we'll see you someplace where there's a ball game. <laughs>